Hello, hello, and welcome to the Change With Him Real Raw Dance Podcast. This is Sarah, and I'm so excited to be here with you today because this is not normally a topic (laughs) or a concept or a perception that most people who work for themselves, I don't believe that I work for myself anymore. I used to think, oh, I work for myself, an entrepreneur, solopreneur, and had this whole like me fixed mindset, but years ago, I submitted my resume to God. It was on a bike ride. And just in the point of frustration, I love how God uses everything, even frustration, even heartache, even agony, even pain to draw and pull us closer to him and to seek his name. And I did that on my bike ride one day. I was like, God, I'm done. I'm just, I'm so done. Like I'm done working for myself. I'm, I'm done. This is ridiculous. I'm done uh, working with these people who are coaches and mentors and six and seven and eight figure earners, business women and leaders in the industry, all of those freaking words, they just started to oh, just, just so irritate and agitate me <laughs> because I, I think God was revealing to me what I was seeking. I was seeking to be like someone else. And very few of those people were were followers of Christ. They were followers of the world. And here I was in my personal world, leaning into striving to follow Christ and follow his way and his will and his words. Yet in my worldly business and practice, I was being led by things of the world and and what other coaches and mentors were saying and, and how to make it and how to be successful. And of course I needed to, right? In a sense, um, because as a single mom, raising my daughter, no child support coming in, going through like the years and years and years of court stuff with her dad and, and just the severity of narcissistic abuse and the impact of it itself was just like, I'm done. I, I need, I need a way. And, and God had provided a way and he created a way, but there was this sense, this resounding sense that it was never enough that, that what came in just as quickly, just as easily went out. And so we needed to keep on the grind, keep in the hustle, keep on the hamster wheel. And I, on one hand was so, so blessed with the path that God led me on because it led me to healing and ultimately led me to him who is the author of healing the (laughs) the healer himself not just healing practices methods modalities uh but really the the king and the creator and the author of healing the one who really it all came from and i'm so grateful for that and there was just this part of me my spirit and my soul that's like god i i desire for others to know that i desire for others to know that yes of course healing rapidly rapid transformational therapy is available it is accessible it is profound it is incredible it's life-changing, life-altering. Every client that I've ever worked with has said that. I wish I had found you sooner. I wish I had found this sooner. But I knew, or I prayed, and I longed for them to know that that experience of healing, of transformation within didn't come from them. It didn't come from me alone. It came from God. And I, I turned in my resume. I said, God, I have you know, as so many entrepreneurs and people do, influencers or whatever we want to call ourselves now, we can slap any title on anything now and proclaim it and declare it and decree it and then go out there and try to achieve it, right? It's like anyone can be their own CEO. It was funny because literally like bought the LLC, Rewrite Your Life, and I'm like, I am the CEO of Rewrite Your Life. And and technically that's true, right? (laughs) In the eyes of the world. But that... And this was even before I had a relationship with God. It was right after I finished my training to become a therapist uh, that was just brought to me, the rewrite your life. And like, this is weird. I had an experience of not knowing where something came from, but knowing that it was from something outside of myself and it just resonated within myself. And so from the beginning, that's what my business has been called, rewrite your life, transformational healing, transformational therapy working with the internal unconscious mind, the beliefs that we have that dictate everything else that we have, right? Our thoughts, our actions, our words, our beliefs, and this internalness, this internal change, this internal transformation that's that's guided and led by by who he is. And I was seeing the difference in the way that my life is being guided and led by drawing closer and drawing more near to him and desired for everyone to know the truth that that, that 
internal transformation and experience of freedom, of relief, of peace does not come from me. It does not come ultimately from working with me. Part of it is available. There's like a portal and an access that's available through working together because I am in the Holy Spirit. And I knew that. And it, the self-promotion part of it, I'm like, Meh. It never really resonated with that. I did in the beginning, but then the more I got away from the world and the more I got closer to God, it was like, uh, this is like uh, this tension, right? This pull that this is not actually from me, of me, to me, or for me. It's from of, to, and for God, the one who created me and, and all of us in the way that he desires to be is ultimately what sets us free and moving towards, working towards, walking towards, leaning towards that. And so I felt this pull and this shift in my business for a long time. And how do I merge the two? So I remember handing in my resume on my bike ride. I, I'm a visualizer. So I could literally see my resume and it had all these random things on it. It had teacher on it. It had medical assistant on it. It had real estate agent on it. All the things I've done in the past to as different career paths. It had <laughs> like working with children with autism. It had it being a single stay at home mom. It had uh, a therapist is the most recent one and, you know, business owner and CEO on it. And it was like, God, what is this? This is a scrambled mess. I, I, I don't even know what to make of this, but here you go. <laughs> you're the one that can do something with it. You are the one that will use all of this, use everything you've brought me through, everything you've led me through, everything you've guided me to. And ultimately I was being led and guided to you this whole time. And I was just so grateful for that, like overwhelming gratitude for that, that internal knowing and transformation and experience through everything that I had done, which I used to think was on my own <laughs> and for my own well being. And the well-being of my daughter, who I was raising by myself, you know, of course, with the village of my family, but really just me, my mom, my stepdad, ultimately. And I, I just began to lean into the things that I was available for and the things that I was unavailable for and began to really look through the lens of that and see that there are so many things of the world and in the world created by the world that I had previously made myself available for all the self-help, all the self-development, all the podcasts, all the books that were spiritual, that were like manifestation and visualizations and affirmations. And I'm like, Ugh. like I started to feel like those became really heavy and I was choking gag on them. And I'm like, no, 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 no. The world needs to know. Like, no, no, no. The world needs to know. This is all from you, Lord. I was seeking in the past, the creation instead of the creator. And now that I I seek the creator over the creation, you know, there's still benefits to the creation. There's still benefits to a home and a car and money and food. Like those are creations, but they're from the creator. And when we seek and when we desire to, to get closer to the creator, not the creation, especially when it comes to money and business and success, quote unquote, in and of the world and how the world defines it, everything, everything internally changes. And I started to see what I had made myself available for in the past that led to that. I was making myself available for open doors of influence for others' definitions of worldly success, of financial success, of monetary success, of levels of success, and desiring to go after, to achieve, and to obtain what other people's definitions of success were, right? Multi-millionaire, millionaire, you know, all these people who had, quote unquote, all these things, and, and started to realize most of this is lies. The internet is a perfect place to hide. So realizing, okay, I'm marketing, I'm publicizing myself on the internet and most of it's lies and realizing I had subscribed to so many lies. And God placed this word on my heart and the word was unsubscribe. And I heard someone share and say one time, you need to unsubscribe. It is a self-care 
self-help practice, but I really believe it's a spiritual godly practice to unsubscribe, to go through and, and sort through and shift through what you're following, what you're letting in, because our our inbox is constantly being penetrated. Our mind, our thoughts, our emotions are constantly being penetrated through the outlets of our body, through our eyes, through our ears, through what we hear, through what we see, through what we read. And God said, unsubscribe. And I thought, holy shit, what a revelation. So I started going through my my inbox, which I mean, there are tens of thousands of unread emails, unopened things that were coming in that I would quickly see. But anything that comes in through your eyes or your ears, it, it leaves a mark somewhere. You may not feel it. it. It may be as light as a feather, but it's still there. Have you ever heard that phrase, what weighs more, a pound of rocks or a pound of feathers? And we can start to think, well, logically, a pound of feathers is less than a pound of rocks because rocks are heavier than a feather. But when we really listen, contemplate, <laughs> and understand, they're both a pound. They both make an impact. And all these things make an impact, the things that we're subscribed to. And I realized I was subscribed to all these healing things and this modality and that modality leading me away from God, who is the ultimate healer, who is Jehovah Rapa. I did a podcast on that yesterday. And away from the one true source of healing and what he revealed. I didn't really know what it meant at first. And then thank God I heard a podcast on it was unsubscribe. What are you making yourself available for? So you have made your inbox and your Instagram, your social media available to be penetrated by all these things of the world, by those you follow, by the message that they share. And And you may think, well, I don't care. I don't open the email. I don't read it. I really don't dive into the post. I just scroll along. I just scroll past, but it is still, it's still there. It's still in your presence. It's still in your energy. It's still in your inbox. It's still in your world. I mean, your inbox is part of your world. Who you follow on social media is part of your world. Their message and and what they're saying to lean towards, to go towards, to move towards, to look towards most of the time are of things of the world. And as I started to unsubscribe, I started to realize that I experienced this internal peace because I was making myself unavailable for certain things. And I, I didn't really realize what it was until I did, until I, I started sharing the message of putting your life in the hands of Jesus in and incorporating it into my work, into my business. And I noticed in the beginning a significant decrease, a significant drop. And it was it was an experience that I had around fear. It felt like there was one moment in my own personal therapy session with another another practitioner who who is trained in the same modalities of therapy that I am. And I had this vision of going off to the edge of a cliff and incorporating this into my business, incorporating Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit into my business. It felt like I was walking to the edge of a cliff. I've been to uh, Kauai and we did, I I can't even say the name of the hike, the Awapui Trail, I think it was, when my daughter was six months old and absolutely the most gorgeous hike I've ever done. Just hands down by far. You hiked. Most hikes I do are straight up and then straight down. And this one was straight down. And then on the way out was straight up. So you go down, but you go to these cliffs and, ah, like you know, in your soul, you are in the presence of God and in the midst of his creation. It is just so beautiful where the sky and the sea just melt into one. Just They become one. The blueness of the sky, the blueness and the vastness of the sky and the ocean where they meet, it's like they don't exist separately. It's like they're all one. And so you're standing in the presence and you feel this oneness. I mean, that was my experience anyway. And 
I, I just can't explain it or describe it. I know God was there with me looking back now at that time and that experience. I was just in awe. I don't think I literally had my jaw dropped, but my spiritual jaw was dropped to the ground, just trying to soak and take this all in. It was the most profound beauty I had ever been in the midst of. And it was just amazing. I knew God was there. And so in this therapy session, I had this visualization of in this representation internally of what it was going to be like to incorporate and to bring Jesus into my life and my business, uh, to move out of the ways of the world and into the spiritual world and the spiritual realm. And it was scary because it was like, this is against everything the world teaches and preaches. It's against, it's different from everything you've you, you've ever been led to. Uh, it is very unknown. It is this very weird, dark, scary territory. Like, do you have what it takes? And then I realized I don't need to have what it takes because I trust in the one who, who has what it takes, who is the creator of all the things that, uh, that it takes. And it was like this, okay, well, you're, you're going to drop, like there's going to be a drop. And this felt like jumping off the edge of the ledge, and there was a lot of like, ee, 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 like take a step forward, no, pull back, take a step forward, no, pull back. But there was this sense of jumping off the edge of the ledge. There's no turning back. There's no going back because it's a straight drop down into the depths of the ocean, into the vastness of the ocean. And what's beneath the surface of that, right? Are there sharks? Are there jellyfish? Are there things that are going to kill me? Would the fall alone kill me? And it felt like this dropping into faith and just trusting. And it felt so scary. And I felt like, I don't know if I can do that. Like the way that I've been doing it has worked, has worked massively, has worked incredibly. It's been a blessing financially. I mean, hit six figures in my business the first two years. That's unheard of for most people in business. Most people, it takes three to four years to, you know, get off the ground. And there was a massive drop and incorporating Jesus and, and God into my business. And I was scared of that. I was terrified of that at first because being a single mom who whose sole income, every single penny down to the penny relied on, you know, what I did, what I put out and what I created and all this effort and all this energy and all this work. And I realized this is so works based, not faith based, but yet I was selling, have faith, have faith and trust and hope and believe in yourself. And it was like, no, that's not right. Like, it's not right if you're excluding God. And I had been excluding God in my business and realized I, I deeply, passionately desire to incorporate him instead of exclude him, invite him in, let him in and, and talk about him, teach about him, preach about him. Like he, he is, right? All things. And he is what I knew I had seen in a lot of the ways that I had worked with my clients. Uh, I mean, it's been amazing. It's been fascinating. I literally have had sessions with people that were an exorcism, like declaring, declaring and decreeing the evil spirits get out in the name of Jesus. And this was not by my doing. It was just the experience that my clients had and the work that we we've, we've had and done together. And it was, it, it was like, okay, I knew God was already in my business, but I wasn't talking, teaching or preaching about him and the significance and the importance of, of him. And it was like, God said, trust me. And in my own experience in session, it was something that transformed from a free fall, like a death fall, if you will, into the depths, darkness, and vastness to the floating of a feather. If you're up that high and you release a feather, it's going to move, it's going to go, it's going to flow with the wind. And I experienced this image of him. He's in the wind, right? Every time I go out and I'm outdoors and I'm in nature and I, I see the wind, I hear the wind, I feel the wind. I don't actually see the wind, but I see what it's moving. I see the trees and the leaves and the branches moving. I see things dancing across the ground. Uh, where I ride my bike, there's lots of ducks. And so there's lots of feathers to be found on the ground. And a lot of times I'll ride by them and I just see them kind of floating along. So instead of this plummet and this drop, I experience this floating along and God's power and his strength carrying me along, his spirit carrying me along. And so 
I said yes. I said yes to him. I said yes to letting him in. I said yes to working for him, to being his CEO. I imagined my resume going into this giant stockpile and him seeing it, it glowing, it illuminating, it being at the top of the pile and him just delighting and seeing my name. You know, like a resume has your name at the top and it says Sarah Picaro and it just, it was glowing. And he was so delighted to receive my resume and see all the things I had listed. And I'm just, just so like, I've been waiting for this. I've been waiting for your resume. I've been waiting to see your name in this pile, in this place. And with you, I'm going to do great things. And I was just so relieved and so happy, but also so worldly scared of like, what does that mean about my business? And as I've more recently started to merge the two, my personal life, my spiritual life, my my business life, uh, I did. I noticed this significant drop. I've been sending out emails recently that, that teach that and, and show that and have received incredible feedback as well. Uh and there was, I'm going to pull it up. Uh, I don't normally do this because I'm really not someone who cares about numbers, but for some reason I, after sending out an email that had something to do with God, and if you're not subscribed, you can just go to my website and it's www.re-write, W-R-I-T-E dash your, Y-O-U-R dash life, L-I-F-E dot com and just go to the freebie gift at the bottom it's cool. It's not going to transform you or change you though. So just know that. I think a lot of people are looking for a quick fix, a fast fix, and like some kind of magical pill that will heal (laughs) a combination of the subconscious work to transforming your beliefs, your internal unconscious beliefs to make them more like Christ's and the conscious effort to continue to draw, move near and stay closer to him as close as possible is is really the key that sets you free. It truly is. It's not one or the other solo on its own or alone. And that's just my personal opinion and experience and the path that those who I've worked with who experience the most internal peace and freedom have been led down that same path as well. Um, so anyway, you can go subscribe and go grab your freebie and your gift on my website. It's, um, a sovereignty prayer, a little, you know, recorded audio that I did meditation, if you will, Uh, and so that's the way to get on my newsletter, right? Normal, typical business kind of thing. You get your freebie or your gift and, and then it goes out to the email list. Normally I don't check numbers on my email list, but as I was called to and led to and drawn to that day, I clicked on the analytics button. It's kind of fun to like see numbers. A lot of times they express growth, like on my YouTube channel, you see a lot of growth on my Instagram. I see a lot of growth. It's just kind of fun, but it's always an up and down. It's never straight shut up. Uh, One mentor I worked with in the past said it's up and down on the way up. And it was amazing because this day I clicked on whatever button I clicked on and it led me to seeing the number of people who had unsubscribed And I just got really curious. Okay, I'm no longer talking about all the things I used to in the past about trauma, about CPTSD, childhood post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, like labels, uh, you know, trauma, uh, pain, shame, all these things and how to be free from it in, you know, working with me. It was like, okay, people just want that fast pill, that quick fix and, and the method, the modality of transformation and the ability and space that that is held when I'm working with people, they do experience that vastly. I mean, you just go read the reviews. I got a five-star review yesterday on Google from a recent client. It, it's profound. It's I wouldn't do it if it didn't work for me as well. Um, but a lot of people are looking for that and they're looking for it in things of the world, right? Podcast books, exercises, courses, programs, workshops, all the things or, or just a freebie. Like they don't really want to invest. They don't want to invest internally or eternally. And that's the greatest investment you can make is the internal, which leads to the eternal, right? It, it doing the work yourself here on earth to become more Christ-like, to become more God-like, to become a follower of Jesus, not just a fan and not just say, oh yeah, no, I'm here to celebrate his creation, but not him as the creator. It's like, what do you expect? of course you're going to continue to feel like you're falling short and you're falling flat. And I know that because I experienced it myself time and time again. So I clicked on the button that says unsubscribe. And I was just curious how many people have unsubscribed since I started talking a lot more about God and faith and Jesus. 
uh, not just manifestation or universe. All of that crap is just bullshit. It's going to lead you to nowhere, <laughs> nowhere really fast. Uh, but a lot of people have success with that, worldly success, but but not eternal success. And there's a massive difference. So I clicked on unsubscribe and I saw 29. But it wasn't so much the 29. I think I've got like it said 1900 people on my email list, but then when it sends out, it filters through and it, you know, it goes through duplicates and all those kinds of things. And, uh, so it's, it's at like 1200 and the button below it had a triangle, a red triangle. And it was red, right? Generally red is like bad or not good. It was good. It's green, right? Generally. And it's at 190%. And I thought, holy fuck. 190 percent that's a big percent like that's big <laughs> like first of all how does it become more than 100 if it was 100 it would be all so i'm thankful that it's not all but 29 unsubscribes and increase a red arrow of 190 percent since i started talking about jesus and since i started talking about the power of the holy spirit and god and the way that he's working in my life and the the depth and the the levels and the layers of transformation that I continue to experience with him and sending out all that to my email list. And so I made a post about it that said, I love the protection that God provides. Since I started speaking more truth, those who aren't ready, unremove. Since I started speaking more about truth, those who aren't ready, unremove. And that is the presence, the power of God's protection and his hand at work. And there was this, yes, oh my gosh, thank you, Lord, experience that I had. I don't need to worry about defending myself or my truth, which is you know, that God is the only way. There are other things we can do to be led that way, but ultimately in the end, he is the only way. And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, I am the light. No one that comes through the Father except through me. It's one of my favorite verses. And people are removing themselves, people who are not ready for that truth. I don't have to worry about going out and sorting and sifting through. God is doing it for me. God is working it for me. And keeping those who desire, A, to maybe know more, or B, who are curious, or C, get it. And they're like, yes. And when you get it, you can never get enough of it. Like when you get that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, you can never get enough of it. it you get it. And it's like uh, the song, never going to get it, never going to get it becomes like, I've always got it. I've always got it. Like you just want more of it. It feels so good. And so I looked at verses about God's protection, like Psalm 3420, for the Lord protects the bones of the righteous, not one of them is broken. I'm like, all my bones have been healed. I've never physically broken a bone, but a spiritual bone that's been broken through other people's words, the the worry that other people are going to say that you're crazy or you're not doing things the right way. And it's like, man, that that is healed through Jesus. It's no longer broken. Um Psalm 121, seven through eight, the Lord keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go both now and forever. And it was like, there's a coming and a going, there's an ebbing and a flowing of life, of business, of relationships that the Lord is going to protect you from, that you don't need to worry about going and figuring out and, and sorting through what needs to you to be removed from. I do recommend going through your social media and your inbox and unsubscribing. I got in this unsubscribe kick and realized I felt so free from it. Anything that was like of the world, it just didn't resonate, was just clogging up and taking up space in my inbox. Or with those that I followed, I, I asked, is, is this moving me closer toward the Lord, neutral, or taking me away from it? And if it was neutral, maybe we'll sit on it, but it was taking me away from the Lord immediately automatically hit unsubscribe or unfollow. And I, that's what people did with me in my world. People would unsubscribe, unfollow, and it felt so freeing. It was like, yes, God is keeping those who need this, who long for this, who desire this. And that's how I know he's doing a good thing through providing his protection through unsubscribing and being unavailable for it. They were sending out the message, I'm not available for this. And for all of those that unsubscribed, I just said a prayer for that I know that God is working in and through their lives may not be the time for them now. There may be too much hurt, too much pain, too much trauma, especially around religion 
that that turn them off from this. But God is not about religion. He's about a deep, intimate, personal relationship, and he desires that with you. And it may take you choosing to unsubscribe from particular or certain things. That is my experience. So I want to thank all of those who have subscribed and all of those who have unsubscribed and know that God has a plan, a purpose, and he's going to use all of it for his good and for his glory. Thank you for listening. I'll see you